In the shinobi world of Naruto, we are constantly focused on the physical. What elements can this shinobi manipulate? What jutsus has this ninja learned? What rank is that person? What can they do? What are the talents that they possess? Shinobi must be discreet, strong, and unattached. The shinobi rule number 25 is that a shinobi must never show their tears. We forget that shinobi are people first and ninja second. Some have family and friends, people that they care about, and people who care about them. We often gloss over the trauma, death, pain, and the war that these people go through. While Naruto as a show may have its flaws, one thing it manages to do quite well is display these characters' grief in tough times. To convey this in further detail, I want to look at a particular, sometimes forgotten scene. After Asuma's death, by the hands of the Akatsuki, more specifically Hidan and Kakuzu. The show attempts to display the effect of this shinobi's death, more specifically on his team, and even more focused onto Shikamaru Nara. Shikamaru is shown up all day and all night, seemingly thinking about his sensei. As shown by the bags under his eyes and the passing of time, Shikamaru has become restless, and has even lost his appetite. The wise Shikaku notices his son's immobilizing depression and calls him in to play shogi, as they usually do. Though this game that they play is unlike the others. As Shikaku notices, Shikamaru is playing carelessly, not as he usually does. And so he breaks the silence by telling him this. And asking him what he plans to do next. But not in the game. And as the conversation continues, Shikaku focuses the one-sided dialogue on being careful. And again, he asks his son what he's going to do next. And as the conversation drags along, we see Shikamaru's body language slowly change. He starts off sitting with his back straight, ready to play. And as his father continues to question him about his fallen mentor, and about how he cares for his son, he begins to slouch over. Shikamaru is close to breaking. And one final time he asks him what he's going to do next. Shikamaru blankly stares at his father and he hesitates, placing the shogi piece. Shikaku continues to tell his son that he is proud of him, and that he is smart and talented, and that he doesn't want to see his son's funeral. And then the realization finally sets in as Shikaku tells him. Asuma is dead. With all the rage boiling inside of him, Shikamaru lets loose and knocks down the shogi board. This realization is matched by the candle being shot out, causing the lighting in the room to change from a somber orange to a desolate gray. Shikaku understands that his son is beating himself up over something that he cannot control, and something that he cannot prevent, the past. And so the wise leader of the Nara clan says something that we don't hear often enough in Naruto, but also in life. Breaking the norm in which Jinobi are expected to be strong-willed and emotionless. Shikaku tells Shikamaru to let all the fear and anger and sadness out, which is the first step of grieving. Shinobi witness so much death, loss, and pain that they bottle each and every experience up. These ninja are taught not to express or even show their emotions. That these incidents are what comes with the line of work. They have become so desensitized to death around them that they force themselves to keep going. But never do they give themselves time to process and time to frankly grieve over who they've lost. This scene becomes even more powerful because of who it is. Shikamaru is one of the smartest people in the show if not the smartest person in the show, second to his father. Alongside his intelligence, he is a very logical and rational person. Oftentimes, logical, rational people are not in tune with their emotions, because emotions and logic are seen and known to conflict each other, the brain versus the heart. 
Most characters in Naruto have showcased some form of emotion at least once by the time Asuma's death comes around. But the genius Shikamaru we have come to know and love at this time was pretty lazy and emotionless, always saying how everything was a drag. While he cried once before, hearing his chilling sobs really reinforced his devastation. <laughs> Shikamaru lost one of the most important people in his life, and Shikaku knew his son's restlessness and human desire for revenge would lead him to a rather early demise. So the head of the Nara clan forced his son to let out the anger and sheer rage bottled up inside of him. Shikaku's role as a caring father, forcing his son to feel, really caught me off guard, but it was portrayed very carefully and it was very well written because it managed to stay true to the dynamic between wise father and his hurting son. And Shikamaru allowing himself to be in pain and to feel gave him the peace of mind to think and to create the plan to event his fallen mentor. Feel everything, always. <laughs>